me check my badge. Yeah, I'm Chris McKay. Uh, I'm a scientist at NASA Ames Research Center, and I'm going to co-chair, along with Penny Boston, who you heard from earlier, the first session. And the first session is uh, the search for life in our solar system. And it's particularly exciting, I think, at this time to be at this conference for two reasons. One is, uh, as you're hearing, and we'll hear again throughout this session, we're at a, at a cusp in our search, in our exploration of the solar system. We're about to move from the period of reconnaissance to what I call the period of astrobiology. The next wave of missions to these worlds that you're gonna, we're going to talk about could answer the question, is there life in our solar system, and is it a second genesis of life? Uh, and it's, it's exciting to read papers and hear talks where the speakers say, this is the best place to search for life in our solar system. Carolyn just did it on Enceladus. We hear the, I hear the same talks about Europa and Titan and Mars and, don't laugh, Venus. Right? And we're going to talk about all those worlds here today. And the fact that all of them are the best places to search for life in the solar system says that we are uh, suffering from many good choices and many good targets. And that's another reason why I'm particularly interested and excited for this meeting is the possibility that non-traditional space agencies might get involved in this exciting endeavor. Uh, Breakthrough Initiative, as you know, has gotten involved in supporting research in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and other areas. Maybe there's going to be uh, private missions and private involvement and public partner partnerships, public-private partnerships in this search for life. And I think that would be a good thing. It would enhance the capability and enhance the connection uh, with everybody. So the session, uh, the overall session has two parts. The first part is speakers, uh, presentations with no questions and answers. Uh, the second part is a panel with only questions and answers. Uh, and we've got a really good mix of, of uh, presenters and uh, panelists. We were able to basically get our first choice in every case by uh, persuasion and bureaucratic uh, uh, stubbornness. Uh, and so we're really, I'm really happy with the panels and the presentation. Uh, I'm also uh, particularly excited to be co-chairing this session with Penny Boston. Penny, I've known Penny since I was 17. And we've been interested in the search for life since then. Now, that was long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. So <laughs> it's great to be here just now when we may be seeing a turn in our capability to explore and the possibility that we'll detect life. So what I'm going to do now is introduce for the second time Penny, who will introduce the first three speakers. And then after the break, I will introduce the next three speakers. And then both of us will co-chair the panel this afternoon. I think it's going to be very interesting. And as you hear discussions of these worlds, think about how will we find life on them and how will we understand its nature and how will we determine if it really is a uh, second genesis of life. So Penny, uh, can you come up and take the chair? Penny, as you heard before, is the head of the Astro Astrobiology Institute. Uh, so I have to call her Dr. Penny Boston now because she's a big way to dance. <laughs> it's Dr. Penny to you, that's right. Um, so we have a, a great lineup. I want to introduce quickly our uh, first speaker. And just one minor correction, if people are really good and do their talk in good time, there may be time for a question or two. Uh, that doesn't detract from the fact that we'll have a very lively, uh, fully engaged uh, uh, discussion when we get to the, uh, the panel group.